I messed up. I was facing life in prison for armed robbery and what the detectives labeled as a drug deal gone bad. The judge looking down at me, disappointment on her face as if I was her own son. I had on a navy blue jumpsuit. Shackles ran from my ankles up to my wrist and around my waist. But the thing is, I had no business being there. I came from a good home, a loving family. My mom, she taught me God. My dad, he taught me sports. I shouldn't have been there. But yet there I was. Goosebumps ran down my arms from the chill of the courtroom and the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up from the anticipation of the gavel finally slamming down. I knew I messed up. I was about to lose my freedom because of it. After being sentenced to four years in state prison, the roller coaster of emotions only intensified, as you can imagine. But the truth is, I lost my freedom long before that day in the courtroom. And what I discovered is that we can be in prison without physically being in prison. We can be chained down by our addictions and destructive habits. We can be restricted by our fears and insecurities. We can be trapped by our limiting beliefs and negative mindset. This is a conversation about freedom. With our time together today, you may just find that you aren't as free as you think. And as challenging as that may sound, I promise you, and I know this from experience, when you recognize that, that's when growth begins. Today I'm going to share with you two lessons that I learned from my time in prison, two lessons that played a huge role in my overall transformation while I was inside and have continued to allow me to excel in just about every area of my life since getting out. What I want to invite you to do today is show up honestly. I want to encourage you to ask yourself, where is it in your life that you may have constructed your own prison walls? And together we'll take the first steps to break free. Number one, have a game plan. Have a game plan. Before that day in the courtroom, I was in county jail. County jail is like the holding tank. It's where you wait to see the judge and answer to the crimes that you committed. Now, I had no idea how much time the state was going to offer me. I mean, you can imagine, my, my family was a wreck, the pain, the embarrassment, the, the hurt that they were going through. At times, I felt like I should just push them off, I should just do this on my own, but I could always count on them being there for me. I could always count on them answering the phone and talking with me. Some conversations better than others, of course, but they were always there. I remember one call in particular I'll never forget. I had an aha moment that day. I called my dad. I said, Pops, I don't know how much time I'm going to get, but I want you to know that I really, really want to change. In fact, I want the exact amount of time God wants me to have. Not a day earlier, not a day longer, the exact amount of time I need to make this happen. He said, all right, son, we're going to get through this. That was the first moment that we had hope for the future. Now, a couple months go by, the state offered me a plea deal of four years, which I accepted. One week later, I was on my way to prison, crammed on a bus with about 15 other inmates, all starting their own journeys. Now, arriving in this new world, I had the best of intentions. Remember the phone call, right? To stick to a routine, to stay out of trouble, to create the changes that I wanted. The problem was I had no idea how to actually do that. I didn't have any sort of game plan in place that was going to get me there. We can all admit there's things that are holding us back, keeping us from our true potential, limiting our growth. For some of us, it's just bigger than others. Over drinking, over indulging, over sleeping, over working, over reacting overthinking. That's a lot of overs. And no matter where you fall on the spectrum, they can all cause us to underperform. The goal is to recognize what is it in your life that's limiting your growth and making a decision, putting a game, game plan in place to fix it. Because without a game plan, there's too much room for error. There's too many variables. There's too many distractions in life. And we all know what happens to so many of those awesome New Year's resolutions. Nothing. Nothing changes. 
And that's exactly what happened to me. I wasted my first six months in prison. I started glorifying my past, wearing it as a badge of honor just so I could fit in. I started talking about the drugs and the money and the party. I even started smoking and selling cigarettes while I was inside. I was basically doing the same behavior that got me to prison in the first place, only now in a new environment. I remember saying to myself, Eric, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're going to throw this all away. You're going to waste this four years. You're going to come out the same, if not worse, if you don't change. And let me ask you, that, that area that you want to see growth in, that change that you want to make happen in your life, six months from today, one year from today, if you're in the same place getting the same results, how are you going to feel? That was the realization I needed, that I had to do something different. And at that six-month mark, I recognized that I had to face my biggest enemy up until that point, myself. At times, have you ever felt like you could be your own worst enemy? Well, I made a decision, a decision that I was going to do whatever it took to change my life. And it started by simply reaching out and asking for help. So I called my brother Jeff. Now, Jeff and I, uh, our stories are slightly different. You guys will see. There's just a few small variables. So he graduated from Stanford University. Uh, he went on to become a professional tennis player, top 100 in the world, had one of the fastest left-hand serves of all time. He then went on to become a successful entrepreneur and high-performance coach, or simply put, the golden child for short. So I called Jeff. I said, bro, listen, I really want to change. I do. I just I have no idea how or where to start. I don't know what to do. He said, okay. I'm going to send you two books. I want you to start by reading those, and then afterwards we're going to, we're going to get on a uh, call, coaching call once a week. And together we created my game plan. For the next three and a half years, I relentlessly pursued all things growth. I discovered a hidden talent for public speaking I had no idea existed. And speaking in prison is great, by the way. Your audience, fully captive. Not going anywhere. They're locked in. All right? I helped set up workshops and masterminds in the dorms, all in hopes that other inmates would make a decision to break free. That was the title of one of my talks, Break Free. Yeah, that didn't go over well with the guards at all. Bad choice of words there. But I was finally taking intentional steps, intentional action steps that were, you know, that, that was going to get me to the place I wanted to go. And guess what? I was finally seeing results. And that brings me to my second lesson. Stretch your comfort zone. You have to be willing to stretch your comfort zone. I remember one day, completely normal day, I'm out on the rec yard, I'm doing some pull-ups, I'm doing some dips, some push-ups, I ran the track a couple laps, we have a beautiful scenery, this nice barbed wire fence sur uh, surrounds the whole rec yard. Uh, I'm on my way back to the dorm, but I wanted to stop by canteen to pick up a few items. For, you know, for, you know, we're going to cook uh, that, that night. So I got some ramen noodle soup, some honey buns. We try to eat very healthy in prison. And, and so this guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, Eric, man, you got to come to this class tomorrow. I said, what class? He says, it's called Gavel Club. I said, what's Gavel Club? He said, it's all about public speaking. I said, public speaking? He's like, yeah, man, we talk about growth. You should check it out. I said, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. So I go back to my dorm, and now I have this invitation on my mind for the rest of the day, for that night, and it was racking my brain. Because up until that point, my personal development journey had been private. Some of my thoughts came from fear. Some came from ego. Ego sounded a lot like this. Man, these guys aren't doing what I'm doing. They're not making the changes I'm making. They're not taking growth seriously. I've already got my morning routine in place, so if I go, it's just going to mess it up. Yeah, I don't know if this is for me. Fear sounded a lot like this. Well, I've never given a speech before. What if, what if I mess up? What if they put me on the spot? What if, I, what if I freeze? What if I don't know what to say? I look stupid. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if this is for me. You see, we will do that to ourselves. We'll start overthinking, and we will talk ourselves out of doing something good for bad reasons. Let me ask you, let me ask you, where in your life have you let comfortability keep you from growing? Where have you let fear stop you from taking action? Fear of failure, fear of rejection, Fear of criticism, fear of judgment, fear of the unknown. 
What or who in your life have you been avoiding because it's painful or uncomfortable to face? If I wouldn't have felt so convicted to go that day, I would have stuck to my morning routine thinking everything was fine. But in reality, I would have been missing the very class that would ultimately change my life. The very class that was the catalyst to me being on this stage in front of you today. That's a crazy thought. But thankfully, the conviction was there. I said to myself, these motivational speakers, the Tony Robbins, the big names, they're out there. They're speaking. They're on stages. They're talking about growth. You need to go. You need to check it out. It's in alignment with your values. It's in alignment with your mission. Go. All I had to do was one thing, and I did. I stretched my comfort zone that morning, and I went. And guess what? I had a good time. I went back the following week, and I signed up. I went back the week after that to give my icebreaker. Now, the icebreaker is like a four to six minute intro talk. It's where you, you know, share who you are, why you wanted to join the club. That was the moment I fell in love with speaking from stage. Now, a couple months later, a lot of speeches later, a lot of practice later, I won the speech contest at that very club, and I went on to compete against two other prisons. And I got published in a local newspaper while incarcerated. That only happened because I was willing to stretch my comfort zone and reach out for something different, something greater. Where can you stretch your comfort zone to start getting better results in your life? Is it hiring that trainer or coach who you know is going to push you past your so-called limits? Is it hiring that financial planner who's going to put the microscope over all those questionable decisions, but then is going to give you the game plan you need to put you and your family in the best position possible? Is it reaching out to that someone who you know the conversation is going to be hard, but it's on your heart and you know there's going to be growth? Where can you stretch your comfort zone to start seeing better results in your life. So, remember when I said that icebreaker, that was the first talk? There was one that I overlooked, and I didn't recognize it until I was actually writing this TED Talk. Back in the courtroom that day, we had asked the attorney if he would, if he would request that I was able to say a few words after sentencing. So he did, and the judge granted that, and I stood up, and I looked out to the courtroom, I looked to the judge, and I nervously said, I want to take responsibility for what I did. I know it doesn't make it right. I know it doesn't take back what I did. I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge that what I did was wrong, and I want to apologize for the pain that I've caused the victim, the victim's family, and the city of Orlando. I want you to know that I'm going to use this time to change my life, and when I get out, I'm going to be positively contributing to society. Now, I didn't know that was going to be the first speech of many. But here we are today. From the courtroom to the TEDx stage. And I can tell you two of the biggest factors that brought me here today was constantly stretching my comfort zone and following a game plan to get to the next level. We have to be willing to endure the friction that comes from growth. We have to be willing to endure the pain that comes from stretching and reaching out for something greater. We have to be willing to endure the temporary discomfort that comes with lasting change. We have to be willing to go from prison to prosperity. Thank you.